you know, often when we're out in the woods foraging for wild edible and medicinal plants, we're keeping our eyes peeled on the ground because, of course, that's where a lot of them do grow. But if that's the only place we look, we're going to miss out on some of the easiest foraging and possibly the tastiest, right at eye level, like these fresh, light green spruce tips. If you're interested in hearing more about spruce tips, keep watching. So the tree that I'm picking right now to do a little bit of harvesting from is a black spruce. Good example of a black spruce. A little wider at the bottom than a lot of black spruce are. And that's because we're sitting on a rock oak crop. So this, this tree has room to spread out where if it was in a tighter confines of the forest, it would be a lot more almost conical, straight up and down, not spread out like a lot of the other spruce are. But uh, here on this side of the tree, I'm facing south. I've got a lot of good spruce tips to choose from to pick. So I'm going to do that. I'm using my collection pouch. I'll give you a better look at this in a minute. My collection pouch from the Crafted Woodsman that was gifted to me. I did a review on it a little, a little while ago. And uh, so you may ask yourself, as I stand here and pick these, am I causing any damage to the tree? Well, what you're at, in fact, what you're doing right now, what, or I'm doing right now, is pruning. I'm just doing some very light pruning to the tree. I'm not causing harm to the tree itself, but the immediate area where I'm picking these spruce tips off uh, won't grow any larger this year. It will next year. But, you know, if you look at this tree, it's loaded. It's absolutely, every branch and every extension and every branch has three li brand new little spruce tips on it. As long as I spread my work out and I don't take too many from any one place, I'm not going to cause any harm to the tree. And when I think I've got more than enough off this tree, there's a lot of other trees I can be picking from. So as I pick, one of the things I'm looking for is the length because, uh, of course, not all spruce tips grow at the same rate. Some of them are a little longer, some are a little shorter. What I'm looking for is a spruce tip like this, and this is about one inch long, so it's quite flexible, quite soft. Some of them are a little shorter. I like to wait till they're about an inch long, and the reason is, as they st first start growing in the spring, they have a little brown shell on it. Let's see if I can find one that has a brown shell still on it. Most of them have popped their shells off which is what you want. I think a little piece of shell right here. I don't know if you can see that very well, but it's, it's almost like chaff. It's almost like the, uh, what's on the, on the outside of wheat, the, so the bran. And uh, that little piece of brown shell will pop off as the spruce tip comes out. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just it doesn't add anything to the flavor or the texture. No nutrition in that shaft, maybe some fiber. So that's all I'm doing is I'm just looking for ones that are a little bit longer and what little bit of chaff or brown shell is in there, a little blow like that, and it just disappears. So I'm going to work here for a little while, not too long. Again, I don't want to take too much off of this tree. And uh, then we'll sit down and we'll have a talk about spruce tips. All right, it didn't take me very long to pretty much fill this forage bag, maybe 15, maybe 20 minutes. There was just a few trees located where I was picking a, a little while ago. And uh, I just picked a few off each of the trees and again, almost filled this bag up. I think this is probably enough for me for at least for today. Well, I guess that depends on what I'm going to use it for, isn't it? So we'll talk more about what you can use spruce tips for in a few minutes. Once again, if you're interested, this is the forage bag that was sent to me by Rob Young at the Craft Woodsman. It rolls up nicely on my belt. It's out of the way. I don't even think about it until I'm ready to use it. Pops open, rolls down, and you can see it holds quite a bit of stuff. Uh, I do have uh, kind of an introductory review of the gifts that Rob sent me. I'll put a link up in the corner here to that uh, video if you're interested. And you can check out more of Rob's stuff, but we're talking about spruce tips today. So let me just grab a few out of the bag and show you what it is I've been gathering. So these are the spruce tips, that light green soft tip that grows at the end of the spruce trees. Well, they grow at the end of all evergreen trees. Some form of tip does, but today I've been harvesting exclusively black spruce tips and I'll explain why. So in Nova Scotia, we have three natural uh, or indigenous spruce trees. We have the red, the white, and the black spruce. The red spruce, by the way, is our provincial tree, which is kind of an interesting little fact. Uh, I was out harvesting a little while ago some of the white and the red. They came and uh, 
emerged early compared with the black. The black spruce had just come out this week. So I waited to make this video until the black spruce tips come out because my experience is um, these are the better tasting tips. Not that there's anything wrong with the others, that, that my personal preference is these are a good tasting tip and they're good for a lot of things and we'll talk about that in a moment. So, and that's interesting to know that um, if you get out and you find that there's some spruce tips growing, how are you gonna know if you like them, if it's the right ones? You try them, you taste them, and see if the taste is to something you're going to like. We'll talk about the taste in a minute as well. But uh, yeah, so I have a bag of spruce tips. What am I going to do with them? Well, before I tell you what you can do with spruce tips, let's talk about the nutritional and the medicinal value of them. So spruce tips, to start with, are absolutely chock full of vitamin C, vitamin A, and other carotenoids, the antioxidants, which are helpful for keeping our immune system at its working best, so that alone makes them worthwhile. But they also have a lot of potassium and magnesium, which is helpful for wound healing. They have a lot of chlorophyll, and chlorophyll is vitally important to our systems. It, there's a number of things it does for us. It, uh, it will help scavenge free radicals out of our system and remove heavy metals, help transportation of oxygen to the lungs and to the tissues. Um, it'll help with wound healing as well. And an interesting thing is that they will help to control cravings and maybe help with some weight loss. So, and actually I can attest to that. Uh, I quite often I'll snack on these as I'm going through the woods in the spring as a nice spring edible. And I find that they do tie to, tend to hold me over until I'm ready to make some lunch. So, yeah, it's, they're pretty good working for that as well. So, what are you going to do with them? You've got a bag of spruce tips. What can you do with them? Well, the easiest thing is to eat them. They're tasty. Let me explain. So, I've tasted all the spruce tips, and each of them have a slightly different flavor. They all have some similarities. To start with, right, the first thing you notice, at least the way I'll describe it, is a, a very citrusy, lemony kind of flavor. On top of that, there's a bit of a resiny taste. Um, there's a bit of dryness that kind of makes your, your mouth pucker up a little bit like a, like a, a lemon might. Um, it's not sweet by any means, and it's quite an intense flavor as well. So, the first time you try one of these, just be forewarned, they have a bit of an intense flavor if you're eating them right off of the tree. You may like it, you may not, but don't give up because you may try another tree and say, I, I much prefer that one. Plus, when you process these through cooking, and we'll talk about that, um, it does change the flavor a little bit and makes it maybe a little bit more palatable if you're not, good, you know, you're not good with the, uh, the strong flavor right off the tree. So yeah, you can eat them right off of the tree. You can just pop them in your mouth as a trail snack. One of the more popular things people do with them is to make tea. And uh, what a great tasting tea it is. It's just one of those tastes of nature. So grab a handful, bring your water to a boil, drop them into the water, take it off a boil, 10, 15 minutes. You could simmer them, but it's better just to let them steep off of the heat and uh, filter out the, the tips. And you've got a nice, healthy cup of tea, which you'll find quite invigorating and quite tasty as well. What else would, can you do with them? Well, you can bake with them. You can cut them up and bake them into cookies or bannocks. Um, you can turn them into jellies. You can turn them into a syrup. Uh, you can uh, put them right in a salad. A lot of people put these right on top of the salad. If you dry it, you can break them up and sprinkle them on food like rosemary, so a herb for enhancing the food, especially meats, especially wild game. It, it's especially tasty to put on wild game. So there is a list, and I'll put a few of those ideas down in the show notes below, um, and then I'll let you go looking for recipes if that's something of interest to you. So one of the other things that quite often is done with them, our, our First Nations people use these for making a cough syrup, syrup out of, and you can make a regular syrup, a sweet syrup for putting on top of pancakes, but if you were to make a decoction, in other words, just simmer it down for a while, let it cool, you can use it as a mouthwash and gargle, to suppress or ease the uh, sore throat. And I suspect that has a lot to do with the resins and the, the their antiseptic and anti, um, uh, you know, pain relieving qualities that they have in them. And the resins we know in the tree do that. So there's resins in the tips that will just give you a mild bit that when you gargle with it, it's going to, to reduce some of, the, some of the irritation in the back of your throat. So yeah, spruce tips. There's a lot of good uses for them. I like eating them right off the tree. One of the other things you can do with them is, um, and it's kind of interesting because one of our local breweries does this, is you can use them to flavor beer. It not only flavors beer, but it acts a lot like hops in that it has an antibacterial quality that keeps the beer from going bad. People will make mead from it. They'll make wine from it. You can flavor alcohols with it. Um, I think beer is probably the most popular 
for if you're going to make some of an alcoholic beverage with them. So yeah, there's quite a few things you can do with spruce tips. Okay, so that was just a quick rundown on an easy finding forageable, something that's easy to identify, something that you can forage and eat right off the tree, something you can make a nice tasting tea with, or if you want to collect up enough to take home and to bake something else. You know, this time of year, at least for me, the woods is absolutely full of the black spruce tips. The other ones have already grown past the edibility stage. How do you know if they're still edible? Um, try them. Again, as they get older, they're going to start losing that light green color. They're going to start to turn more to the color of the rest of the branches on the tree, and they're not going to be so easy to chew on. So get them while they're young. Like I mentioned earlier, I like to get them when they're about three quarters to an inch long, maybe an inch and a half, but after that, they're probably going to be a little tough. So a question you might be asking yourself, if you can do this with spruce trees, can you do with the other evergreen trees like the firs or any of the others? Absolutely. Yes, you can. You can harvest and use the tips off of all the evergreens, at least here in Nova Scotia, with the exception of one. And I would caution you to make sure that when you're harvesting that you haven't found one of these, and that's the Canada yew. And I'll put a little bit of information in the show notes below, because all parts of the Canada yew are poisonous, except for the red berry, which well, is not actually a berry, it's called an arrow. The flesh on the berry is edible, but the seed inside is not, it's poisonous. Um, it's very easy to identify. It does look like a fir tree in that the needles lay flat. Uh, it is an evergreen, but it's it's different enough that you shouldn't be you shouldn't confuse it with any uh, any of the others. The needles on it are quite long, not as long as a pine, but longer than than a fir needle is, but lays open and flat like a fir tree does. Quite easy to identify, and of course, if it has red, red berries on it, then don't eat it. That's the only one you have to be concerned with, at least in this area. I'm not sure of any others around the world, but if you know of any, you please add them in the comments section to warn other people of. But by and large, I've harvested off of um, the eastern hemlock, the, the white pines, the fir trees here, all of the spruce trees here. And what else have I harvested them on? Oh, even larch. Now, larch is not an evergreen, but it does put out some nice new buds early in the spring. And those are quite tasty, much milder than the spruce tips are. And yeah, there's a lot of different ones you can try and do a little research on and you can find you can use them all for making tea. Most of them you can chew right off of the branch and you can make other edibles with it, such as cooking, put them in the cookies and bannocks, as I already mentioned. All right. That's enough about spruce tips. If you have any questions about harvesting spruce tips or any of the other evergreens or any other questions at all, put them in the comments section below. But until I come back with another video, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.